initial inspiration for this picture came from a visit to the Brodick Castle grounds, where you get this fantastic view of Boat Fell with two standing stones in the foreground. I made an initial sketch of the view, but I also added in some stone walls, which I actually found in Pern Mill. The picture started with some fleece from some sheep at Bellevue Farm over at Black Waterfoot. And a blue-faced Leicester and some herdwicks from Creedmuir Farm at Kildonan. And some alpacas from Bellevue Farm. And these alpacas from Aaron Alpacas at Balmickle. Here's the fleece from the blue faced Leicester laying out in my garden. I take my time to gently separate the locks from the fleece. Then I tease them out before I put them through the carding machine. I run the fleece through the carding machine several times, probably six or seven times. Each time it gets softer and finer. fleece is now in a bat that's ready to be either needle felted or wet felted. Back in the studio, I'm using the natural white bats to lay down the initial base for my felt picture. You can see me lying these vertically for this first layer. Now I'm laying down the second layer of bats. This time I'm using some of the dyed fleece that's been made into bats. I'm laying these horizontally across the first layer. The colours are very subtle at this stage. I don't want the colours to run when I wet felt, but want just enough colour so that I'm not working on a white base. I'm just indicating where the hills lie where the crop starts.
I've added in the shape of goat fell, and now it's ready for wet felting. I cover the picture with netting, that's to keep everything in place. And now I'm spraying warm water. And some diluted soap. I'm covering the picture to make sure it's wet and soapy. Very gently at first, I use the roller to just start to press down the fibres and make sure the water and the soap's spreading through the fleece. I don't want to be too rough at this stage because the fleece can move around even though it's covered by the netting. It needs a bit more water. And a bit more rolling. I check under the netting every now and then to make sure everything stayed in place if it can move around at this stage still. A bit more water, especially around the edges. And popping the netting back on. And after a bit more rolling, I turn it over just to make sure that the soapy water is filtrated through the fleece to the back of the picture. And then a bit more rolling on the back. starting to take shape now but the edges need a bit of tidying up so I'm just tucking them under to give a nicer finish to the edge. A bit more water especially around the edges. A bit more soap around the edges. And then I'm very gently rolling the edges to make sure they take the shape that I want. Then I start to rub a bit harder again with the roller. That's enough with the roller. Now I'm going to roll the picture up in the mat. Trying to keep everything smooth under the mat. And then I roll for a hundred times in each direction. After a hundred rolls, unroll the picture. Take the netting off to have a look and make sure everything's okay. It needs a bit of smoothing out. And I'll turn it 90 degrees. Pop the netting back on to keep everything in place again. Roll it up. And it's ready for another 100 rolls. a bit more robust now so I'm taking the netting away and I'm just going to start to roll it up in the mat without the netting.
you can see how much it's shrunk. I'm smoothing it out and checking the front and the back. It's now a nice robust piece of felt and it just needs rinsing, drying and it's ready for dry felting. Here's some of the dyed fleece that I prepared to do the dry felting on goat fell. I've used fleece that's been dyed with blackberries and I've also used some black alpaca fleece to darken the colours. I'm just tapping the fleece in with a felting needle. I'm blending the colours as I go to make sure there's darks and lights. Here you can see I've completed the fields and some of the tree line and I'm now just adding in a few little locks that are still left to be curly that have been dyed with cow parsley. That's to create a line of trees just at the back of the field. Here I'm starting to add some colour to the front field and I'm using some fleece that's been dyed with foxgloves and daffodils. These are some herdwick sheep from Creedwynia Farm at Kildonan. I use their fleece to create the little stones for the stone wall that's in the foreground of the picture. I took just a small amount of the fleece and I start to roll it up as tightly as I can. And I use the felting needle just to tap it together. Once it's all rolled up, I use the felting needle to try and keep it all in shape and I've just added a tiny bit of alpaca fleece, black alpaca fleece, over it to add a little bit of definition to the stone. So that's one stone dry felted, now it's ready for wet felting. Add a little bit of water and a little bit of soap and then rub it. I rub it between my hands. I rub it on the mat. I use a wooden rubber to rub it a little bit more on the rat mat. Push it into shape. Just pinch it into shape. And then it's ready to be rinsed and dried and put into place with the other stones to create a stone wall on the picture. All of the coloured fleece that I used in the picture was dyed in my studio using plants only grown on iron and no chemicals. 
I've gathered quite a collection of colours over the year. I've been constantly looking for foraging opportunities, seeking out flowers, vegetables, fruit and her berries, herbs, leaves and even bark. Just one metre of hedgerow in Whiting Bay produced four dye materials, blackberries, elderberries, rose hips and this wild St John's wort which gave a surprising result. These bright yellow flowers produced a salmon pink dye bar and this lovely salmon pink fleece. I wasn't just limited to native plants to Aaron as I was given permission to collect windfall from the Brodick Castle grounds. That resulted in me collecting some eucalyptus bark that had fallen after a storm to experiment with. The drive to the honesty box at Clackade Farm last Christmas resulted in the outer leaves of this fantastic red cabbage giving me this teal blue fleece we ate the rest of the cabbage. And a trip to Robin Gray's Island Gourmet Farm bagged me some beetroot, carrot tops and some of these black currants. The rest went to make Aaron Cassis. The Aaron Community Land Initiative at Whiting Bay has been very supportive. Volunteers and allotment holders have offered me produce including lots of flowers, including lots of marigolds and the skins from these onions. And with my own plot that I've planted and managed over the year, I've had several interesting dyes, including some crocuses, which gave me a really good crop of flowers. I have some woad, which I'm hoping will be ready to use next year, dyer's chamomile, and cornflowers. above the allotments, I picked the lower flowers from some fox gloves. I was so surprised that these intensely pink flowers gave me this pea green dyed fleece. And so all of the colours that are now in my palette are sourced purely from Aran materials. And I've hung the picture from a piece of driftwood that I found on Kildonan Beach after a storm. So this is a felt picture of Aaron, made on Aaron, entirely from Aaron products. 